India, some of the tropical infections are very, very commonly associated with ARDS and these include severe malaria, leptospirosis, hemorrhagic fever, scrub typhus. Okay, in certain parts of India, scrub typhus is endemic and a very important cause of uh, respiratory failure and also H1N1 and other types of influenza. And the important thing of knowing the cause is that you should be able to treat the cause, right? So treatment of ARDS, treatment of the inciting cause is extremely important. And if you've got an infectious origin like malaria or scrub typhus, then treatment of the primary problem is, plays a big role in the management of ARDS and in the successful outcome. Once you've got someone who's hypoxemic, you put them on oxygen, but when the hypoxemia gets worse, you need to go one step further. And today there are two therapies which are available beyond oxygen masks and non-breathing masks, and that is high flow nasal oxygen and non-invasive ventilation, right? So now high flow nasal oxygen, I think everyone is familiar with, especially after our experience with COVID, uh, non-invasive ventilation is connecting a ventilator and instead you don't put a tube, but you have a face mask and you give positive pressure ventilation or CPAP through the uh, non-invasive ventilation. Which is better in patients with ARDS? Is it non-invasive ventilation or high flow nasal oxygen? High flow oxygen by nasal cannula. So there was a very nice study called the Florali study, which was acute hypoxemic respiratory failure without hypoxemia and they compared three interventions. One was standard high flow oxygen, uh, one was standard high flow oxygen by nasal cannula, one was standard oxygen and the other was non-invasive ventilation, right? And when they looked at various outcomes, one of the primary outcomes was need for intubation. So if patients were put either on standard oxygen therapy or high flow nasal oxygen or non-invasive ventilation, if they failed and required intubation, that was a primary outcome. And although there was a trend towards a lower intubation rate with high flow nasal oxygen, it was not statistically significant, but in patients with moderate to severe hypoxia, with a PF ratio of less than 200, high flow nasal oxygen was better. So there was a benefit of reduced need for intubation in patients with a PF ratio of less than 200. And very interestingly, although it was not the primary outcome, they found that the mortality was less in patients who received high flow nasal oxygen compared to either non-invasive ventilation or standard oxygen therapy. So this is showing survival and you can see that the survival is highest with high flow nasal oxygen as compared to the other methods of oxygen therapy. So high flow nasal oxygen seems to have the edge over standard oxygen therapy or non-invasive ventilation as far as the initial therapy of ARDS is concerned. There was another very nice study which was a prospective observational study called the lung safe study and they looked at uh, all sorts of respiratory failure but in a subset of patients with ARDS okay, who were managed with non-invasive ventilation on the first two days. So these were initial management of ARDS with non-invasive ventilation and they found that as the severity of the as ARDS increased then the incidence of non-invasive ventilation failure increased right. So with severe ARDS there was 47% failure rate of non-invasive ventilation. If NIV succeeded, your mortality was pretty low. It was only 16%, but if NIV failed, your mortality was 45%. So it meant that if non-invasive ventilation works, it's good, but if it fails, then you're likely to be faced with a very high mortality. And especially, it was associated with a higher ICO mortality in patients with a PF ratio of less than 150 milliliters of mercury. So the more severe the ARDS, the more are the chances of NIV failure and the more is the mortality. So we have to be very cautious when we start non-invasive ventilation and you have to select out patients. The ones who have mild ARDS may do well, but if they have got moderate to severe ARDS, we need to be careful if we start off with non-invasive ventilation. Why does non-invasive ventilation create a problem with uh, ARDS? And this is a concept of which is called as patient initiated Silly. Silly stands for self-inflicted lung injury. It's a very unfortunate term. It's not inflicted by the patient knowingly. It just sort of happens because of the condition he's in, plus the fact that we are doing some intervention. So you've got a spontaneously breathing patient with acute hypoxemic respiratory failure. And these patients, you know, very often have a strong respiratory drive. They are breathless. They are breathing very hard. They're making a high inspiratory effort. And that increases the transpulmonary pressure. And if you add positive pressure with the non-invasive ventilator, so negative intrapleural pressure, which is high because the patient is breathless and breathing like this, on top of it, you give positive pressure from the non-invasive ventilator, it increases the transpulmonary pressure, 
increases the tidal volume and creates ventilator induced lung injury okay then you get and because of that you get a high tidal volume which causes volutrauma it's a mechanism of lung injury which we'll talk about then the patient exhales they often have active expiration and that collapses the alveoli so the collapsing of the alveoli also causes a type of lung damage called at atrial trauma right and that sort of causes uh, lung injury so where is so in a rapidly breathing hypoxic tachypneic patient with a strong respiratory drive the addition of positive pressure with non invasive ventilation increases transpulmonary pressures increases tidal volumes and predisposes to lung injury which we call as self inflicted 